Hello and welcome back to Classic Rock Vlogs. Yes, we have more Classic Rock hot takes for you today. So, today's going to be kind of unscripted. I'm just going to talk about something that's going on in the world of Classic Rock that's interesting to me and give you my opinion on it. Today, I want to talk about the band Journey. Um, so last spring, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and shortly after, a couple of the members in the band started sniping at each other on social media. It wasn't really the biggest story this year because it just kind of looks like there was some band drama that spilled out into the public. Um, but that happened like six months ago. And as of right now, it doesn't look like any of this has been resolved. So, potentially, it could be setting the stage for some very big and very bad news for Journey fans next year. So the big question is, uh, is Journey about to break up? And if so, why? What the hell? What's going on? Uh, and the short answer, uh, in a word, is Trump. Yes, Donald Trump actually factors into what's going on with Journey right now. And I promise I'm not going to talk about politics in this video. This isn't an anti-Trump thing or a pro-Trump thing or anything. Uh, but he plays a role. Uh, and that's kind of interesting. So let's talk about what's going on with Journey and uh, figure out this weird Trump connection. But before we do that, uh, for those who don't know a lot about Journey, I just want to give a quick background of kind of who they are and how they got to this point. So for those of you who don't know, Journey was a really popular band in the 70s and 80s. And a big reason why they were popular was a guy named Steve Perry who was their frontman. He had an iconic voice and they had a lot of hits. Uh, most of which you can hear very regularly on both classic rock radio and just kind of variety hits radio. So they were really popular, and then at some point in the late 80s, Steve Perry just decided he was done. He did not want to be in the band anymore, and he actually didn't even want to be in music anymore. And he kind of left abruptly. One of the best episodes of VH1's Behind the Music is about Journey. I never really felt like I was part of the band. And the actual breakup of the band was delayed by a number of years because... Steve Perry and the rest of the band spent a lot of time uh, arguing over when they should go out and tour. Steve Perry didn't want to, but the rest of the band did. So finally in the late 90s, Journey was like, okay, we're going on without you. And Steve Perry was like, all right, go, good luck. And uh, he basically went off the road, became a total recluse, and the Journey took a couple of years to kind of find its footing, but um, in a lot of ways, they're back. They're one of the most successful uh, classic rock touring acts uh, even today. When Perry left in the late 90s, uh, they initially tried to replace him with a guy named Steve Augiri. Uh, similar name and a very similar voice. Uh, I saw him with uh, a couple of other ex-lead singers at uh, Wisconsin's State Fair this year and uh, he only did a couple of songs they were all Journey songs and even now he sounds a lot like Steve Perry I remember watching the show and thinking I wonder why they got rid of this guy he is a good front man and he sounds like Steve Perry what else do you want uh, well, I did some reading and apparently he got sick and they got some bad concert reviews so they parted ways in 2006 so they hired a new lead singer, uh, a guy by the name of Jeff Scott Soto, also in 2006. And uh, by all accounts, that really wasn't a good fit for the band. He left in 2007. He didn't really sound like Steve Perry, um, at least that I could tell, and it just didn't work out. A uh, fun story, though. A few years ago, he was singing with the Christmas... Uh, classical rock band, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and they were signing autographs after the show. So I took my uh, tour program to get a signature. And I remember when I was in line, I, I got up to Jeff Scott Soto and I said, you're the guy who used to be in Journey, right? And he kind of was just like, yep, yeah, I used, to, I used to be in Journey. And I was like, that's great, I love Journey. Uh, and I asked him to sign my program, Don't Stop Believing. 
Now at that point, um, his bandmates next to him started kind of laughing and kind of punching him in the shoulder and giving him a hard time. And he was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, he didn't really want to sign it that way, so I kind of had to push him on. I was just like, come on, man, I love TSO, I love Journey. You know, don't stop believing. Hopefully you can see it here. Sure enough, he did. So that's kind of funny. Eh. What's the point of that story? Uh, there isn't one. Uh, it's just kind of uh, a funny little anecdote I had with meeting the lead singer of Journey. But anyway, he was uh, let go from the band in 07. So the next guy they hired was Arnel Pineda in 2008. And his story is pretty cool. It's actually kind of famous in the world of classic rock. Uh, Neil Shane found him on YouTube. And he thought he was a great vocalist, and he invited him to try out for the band. And uh, it was it worked. They they liked how he sounded. He's a little bit younger than the rest of the band, and he has great stage presence. So when they went out and tour in 2008, and I think they also released an album, both were pretty big hits for uh, a classic rock act in 2008. I remember hearing a lot about Journey that year, and most of it had to do with, look at this cool new younger singer they've got fronting the band, and they were filling up arenas and stuff, and uh, it's honestly a really feel-good story. And uh, it kind of set an interesting template of what classic rock bands should do if they're without um, their lead singer. Boston tried the same thing. They found a guy on YouTube, and he is still the front man of that band. It, and it shows that you can go forward even if you're missing a key member. A lot of people would argue Steve Perry was the most important uh, part of the band journey. And they're showing that they can succeed without him. And that's uh, really great for fans, you know, and, and people who want to hear the music and aren't necessarily obsessed with Steve Perry being the guy out front. I saw Journey play uh, in Milwaukee in 2012, also at the Bradley Center. Good show. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, they played all the hits. Now, Journey isn't one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, I, I like a handful of their songs. Uh, I just really wanted to see uh, what the group was like with this new lead singer and to kind of get him off my classic rock list. And uh, I'm glad I did. So right now, the current lineup of Journey is Neil Shea on guitar, Arnel Pineda on vocals, Jonathan Kane on keyboards, Ross Valoy on bass, and Steve Smith on drums. And they were all inducted, I don't think Arnel was, all inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame earlier this year. Uh, alongside Steve Perry and uh, an earlier member, a guy named uh, Greg Raleigh. And that was, it seemed, I mean, for Journey fans, it seemed overdue. Uh, the Rock Hall has always been hesitant to kind of acknowledge the arena rock bands of the early 80s, because that was kind of the era of corporate rock, and Journey really is the face of that whole subgenre. But either way, uh, it seemed like Journey was having a, going to have a very good year. What followed, like two months later, was some social media sniping. Uh, starting with Neil Shane, who is, I should say, the only consistent member from like the start of the band. Like, I, I feel that Steve Perry was like the face of Journey, but it's Neil Shane's band. He's, a, he's always been the primary creative force. And I don't know how their ownership breaks down, but he seems to be like the key member. On June 4th on Instagram, he said, if anyone is unhappy, they are not running my band, then they should leave. So that's pretty confrontational, and that's definitely directed at the band. So what is this all coming from? So here's where Trump comes in. Uh, believe it or not, Donald Trump does have a spiritual advisor. I've never heard of her, and I imagine you haven't either, but her name is Paula White. And Paula White is married to Jonathan Cain, who's in Journey. 
So Paula and Jonathan organized an event for Journey to appear at the White House and pose for a photo. So it seems they did this without Neil Shane even knowing about it because he wasn't even invited. Which is again kind of weird because he's definitely the leader of that band. You would think he would be included. So why is this even a big deal? It was just a picture, right? Ever since he married Paula White, Jonathan Cain has become increasingly vocal about his own personal faith. And Neil Shane believes that Journey really shouldn't, uh, shouldn't get involved in either politics or religion. Probably because he doesn't want to alienate any potential number of fans. And again, Jonathan's wife Paula is a very successful televangelist who promotes the prosperity gospel, and that sort of faith requires um, evangelizing. Are you a charlatan? Um, absolutely not a charlatan. And I think Neil's worried that their evangelizing will bleed over and it will look like Journey, the organization, the band, is preferring one faith or over another. And also, I'm sure he is not happy with that photo of them with Trump. Because in today's politics, everything's so toxic that uh, even a photo op could look like an endorsement. And for what it's worth, Neil claimed that Journey turned down meeting with President Obama many times. And I'm pretty sure he's sincere about that. I don't recall uh, any stories of Journey getting involved in any political campaigns or anything like that. So I think, I think that's a fair point. If you want, if you create music and you want to stay out of politics and religion, and you just want to produce music so people can kind of forget about controversial topics and contentious issues, um, yeah, I definitely get that idea. And having his band go to see President Trump without him even knowing about it, really undermines his whole philosophy about not getting involved, about the hands-off kind of thing. So, yeah, I can see why he's upset. On August 2nd, in a Facebook post, Neil wrote, Journey should never be used and exploited by anyone, especially band members for politics or any one religion. This clearly shows no respect. So he's pissed. He doesn't like it. And the fact that they were able to do it without him even knowing about it tells me that communication, when they're not on stage, is really bad. And that is often a sign of a band that's not getting along. This is not the first time Journey has squabbled a little bit uh, in the media. Um, in 2013, Jonathan Cain took some mild shots at Neil uh, because he didn't like the final product of their 2011 album, Eclipse. Uh, he said Eclipse was too hard rock and it wasn't accessible enough and it didn't sound enough like what he thought the Journey sound was. And he blamed that exclusively on Neil. Um, again, not a big controversy, but definitely uh, implying some behind-the-scenes disagreements. On June 28th on Twitter, Neil started talking about Arnell, and he said, How quickly everyone forgets where they came from. So that implies Arnell actually has Jonathan's back in this fight. Uh, he did go to the White House with them, and he's certainly not voiced any support for Neil. So Neil has been a little feisty at him, too. And I think it's very obvious that Neil believes that Arnell owes him because Neil was the one who picked him out of YouTube and put him in front of this multi-million dollar band. And, you know, fair point. So later that day, uh, Neil was asked on Twitter if their most recent show was going to be their last. And if I was a, a diehard Journey fan, I would find this response alarming. He said, I'm not sure. The last two years have not been easy. Was fine till then. So now he's floating the idea of possibly breaking up. That's a pretty big deal, and that's why this is getting some coverage um, in the media. Because it implies that this Trump thing is less about 
you know, meeting with Trump and more of just a flashpoint for some problems that have been brewing under the surface for, I guess, the last two years. On August 3rd of this year, Neil tweeted out some more dirty laundry. This time it was about their performance at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He said, I had to hold out on signing my release to ensure Greg Raleigh would be able to be on stage playing. John and Ross didn't want him. So they were even squabbling over the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Now that's not totally surprising. There have been a lot of bands that have been surprisingly petty over the inductions. But it's supposed to be a hallmark moment for the band. So if you're fighting during that process, I, I imagine that fight doesn't go away overnight. Also on August 3rd, Neil tweeted out a very firm statement about who owns the name Journey. He said, They will not tour with the Journey name. I've spent way too long building to give up the brand. So the big question here is, is Journey going to split up or not? Well, TMZ finally caught up to Jonathan Cain and they got him on record. He said this. Is the band going to break up over this White House visit? No way. No way. So that's good to hear. But we got to keep in mind that ever since all this drama spilled out onto social media, Journey hasn't played a single show, and as of right now, they have no tour dates booked. And this is a band that normally always has a tour booked. Uh, I think it's weird that they haven't done any shows in six, eight months or whatever it is now. And that tells me that this issue has not been resolved. So what's my take on all of this? Well... I don't know a lot about the various personalities in Journey, but if I had to guess, I would say they're probably not going to break up over it. I suspect they'll come to some sort of truce because this is a band that likes to tour a lot, but what does complicate some things is that Neil Shane is very vocal about wanting to work on other projects. Now that's been true for a couple of years now, not just um, this summer. He publicly begs Steve Perry to come back to the band so often, it's a little embarrassing. Steve Perry has not played with the band since the early 90s, and he has never even hinted that he wants to come back. He's been totally consistent. He doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to play, period, let alone with the band. But that doesn't stop Neil from posting old pictures and telling the press he can come back anytime and, and stuff like that. Um, and weirdly, uh, Arnel Pineda, I remember a couple of years ago, started saying some of the same things, seemingly being perfectly okay with the idea of Steve Perry coming back. Now, on the surface, that makes Arnell look like a class act, you know, that he would not mind at all stepping aside for uh, the guy who was the front man during the heyday. But to me, uh, knowing how bands work and knowing that, like, he'd be surrendering a massive paycheck for that to happen, that kind of hints to me that he's, you know, over these last 10 years not enjoying being in the band as much as he was when he started. Uh, I kind of get the impression that maybe he feels he's made enough money and maybe these guys aren't the easiest to work with, you know, and, and maybe he'd be just fine um, uh, calling it quits. But um, that's pure speculation. I don't know. Neil Shane has also been vocal about wanting to work with uh, other guys he has a history with as well. He's mentioned uh, Carlos Santana he used to play with. Uh, the, the guy I mentioned earlier, Greg Raleigh, they've uh, done a little work together. I know he wants to do more projects with him. And he's even floated the idea of reuniting with John Waite um, for the uh, super group uh, Bad English. Uh, I think that would just be a waste of time because Bad English is garbage, but whatever. And apparently he's got like three solo albums in the works or something like that. So I, I'm thinking he wants to establish a solo career as well. 
all while not giving up the band name Journey. Uh, so I kind of wonder what Neil's thinking. You know, and this is kind of a painful fact for classic rock fans to deal with, but for a lot of these bands that we love, these are the years where all of these guys got to start making final decisions on what projects they want to work on. Because they're at the point where they can't just kick cans down the road and be like, oh, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. Like, there's only a certain number of years that Neil's going to be uh, able to go on stage and go on tour every year. And all of these projects he's maybe wanted to do for the past 5, 10, 15, 30, 40 years he's wanted to do that he hasn't been able to do, um, it's either now or never for a lot of it. And this is true for other bands as well. In my last vlog, I talked about Sammy Hagar's uh, idea for a super reunion. And in the six months since I did that video, it seems like the window on that even is closing because his 70th birthday passed and the Van Halen brothers didn't reach out to him and he took that personally. So now that's even a project that has probably uh, lost its opportunity. So if Neil wants to do shows or albums with Santana or Greg Raleigh or Bad English, he can't really kick the can too much further down the road. And if he's fighting with his own band, well, maybe he says to them, all right, guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to work on something else for a little bit, okay? I'm gonna, I, I have other options. I'm going to go work on this, so we're going to go on... We're just going to take a year off, or we're going to take a, a summer off or something. Not necessarily put the band on hiatus, not exactly break up, but say, we're not touring right now. I'm going to go work on the stuff I want to work on. And then remind them that he's the, the, the band leader. And I don't know how the ownership of the name journey breaks down, but this has definitely been an issue that other bands have gone to court over. So if it gets really contentious and they do split, I bet this would be a case where they'd have to go to court to figure out who owns the name. You know, would would the band keep the name Journey and would Neil have to have his own band called Neil Shane's Journey? Or would Neil Shane keep the band name Journey, replace it with a bunch of, you know, whoever, and the rest of the guys go on as like a Journey tribute show? which is, that option's becoming increasingly common in the world of classic rock. There's uh, a surprising amount of classic rock tribute bands that include actual members of the band they're playing tribute to. It's fucking weird. Ultimately, I think this really could get interesting. It could get very dramatic. Uh, but I also feel it probably won't. I suspect Journey will do shows, maybe they'll do less shows, but I think it'll coincide with Neil Shane working on some projects of his own without the rest of the band. That's what I think is most likely, but there are a lot of options where this could get real ugly. And honestly, for a band with such a tumultuous lineup history, I wouldn't wish it on them. If I had to pick a side in this fight, and I'm not a big Neil Shane fan, He's always struck me as kind of obnoxious, but he's been consistent on this. If they passed up visiting with Obama and past presidents, then I don't think he's out of line to say we're not going to go visit this current president. And for the rest of the band to do it behind his back, yeah, I think that's kind of lousy. And I don't begrudge Jonathan Cain showing up at Trump events because he probably supported him and his wife works for Donald Trump, but he should be clear that his support of Trump is not indicative of the band's support. Now I really should say, I think this is truly one of the dumbest, most stupid things I've ever seen a band fight over. I think it would be really beneath them to break up over something like this. I really hope that Journey does not break up because of Donald Trump. So we'll really just have to keep an eye on it. Hopefully they'll book some tour dates. 
uh, maybe playing on stage will foster some good feelings towards each other. If not, if we don't see shows for months and months, um, that would imply things are, are getting worse behind the scenes because every day they're not out on the road or they don't have any dates announced. That's money out of their pockets. And um, once that is involved in the equation, then fights get really toxic really quickly. So, yeah, keep an eye on it. Hopefully they'll announce some dates soon. And when they do, we can kind of all collectively uh, breathe a sigh of relief. So if you like this vlog or if you're a fan of classic rock, I would invite you to watch... Uh, my other music related videos on this channel. I host a show called Play That Rock and Roll. Uh, those videos are much more scripted. Uh, they have great music and video included in them. It's a tighter show so I would definitely invite you to check that out. And if you have any thoughts on what I've been talking about here today please feel free to post a comment below. So yeah, if you like classic rock, please hit subscribe, please check out my other videos, and stay tuned, because I got a lot more classic rock hot takes for you coming soon. Thanks for watching.